Um, we've moved away from dairy and livestock. Yeah. We're now at the start of our small grain production system. Okay. So again, I'm going to walk you down the line of our of our stand here. Back in my comfort zone. Then, Back now. in your yeah. comfort zone. Yeah. 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 So. Um, I guess you start and you've got to try and do a bit of preparation with whatever you're going to put in the ground. Yeah. Of course, we've got our 8RX. Becoming a popular machine in the UK, oh, isn't it? Oh, it's been great. Yeah. You know, I think we've really seen, it's found its niche. Yeah. It's been a, a real high performing. We've seen people come from bigger tractors down. We've seen people come from smaller yeah. up. They seem to punch above their weight. And the, 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 the four track absolutely. seems to be better than single track design, doesn't absolutely. it? Absolutely. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, really massive amount of traction yeah. low ground pressure so that whole soil specialist tagline that we put to it yeah. it has just found its niche in that so um, really been great for us and um, you know one thing that I guess we're, we're sort of talking here specifically about is the technology that is built within this tractor you know it's got all the great stuff that we all know but actually for the first time we're showing in Europe mm. is this vehicle being fully autonomous Wow. So we big step forward. Big step. Yeah, so we yeah. launched it at CES. We launched it at a technology show in the US a yeah. um, couple of years ago. And a, a fully autonomous AR is available in the US. So commercially, I can walk into a dealer's in the US, order a dozen of these and set them off on my prairie. Yeah? I'm sure they, yeah. would be, they would be your best friend <laughs> if that was what right. you were going to do. Okay. But so, without no drivers at all working absolutely. on their own, yep. me just taking fuel and whatever yep. to them. Yeah. Or control it from your mobile phone, right. basically. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Wow. So um, we're showing off here. Yep. Not available. I, I couldn't take that same order from you yeah. right now. In the UK. But yeah. it's something that we're really excited about. Is that about. just legislation? Uh, yeah, that's just, a big part of it. Yeah. yeah, you know, there's a there's a lot of grey area around it. Mm -hmm. A lot of the homologation, etc., yeah. that mm -hmm. would just make it fit to our market. But it will it will come. Yes, it will yeah, come. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So again, prove, you prove safety and reliability. Correct. It's got a, a camera system, yeah. so fitted to the tractor. There are six or um, pairs of stereo cameras that look and scan around the whole of the vehicle. Okay, so there's a similar unit to that at the back somewhere? Absolutely, or? mounted yeah. on the back. Yeah. So again, this is where we've got this whole AI machine learning. It knows what to look for, whether it be a stick or a brick or an old bicycle. Yeah. It will look at it and it will say, well, I don't know what that is. Okay, so it's not just from a safety point of view of like, you know, if a, a, someone walking a dog walks in front of it, it would literally, if there was some, you know, a, a, say a... I know, I farm quite urban free. So if someone's thrown a motorbike over the head or something like that, it would stop for that. And yeah, if it doesn't right. recognise it, yeah. it goes stop, I don't yeah. recognise it. Yeah. And it actually sends a little picture to the, the, the farmer's camera uh, mobile and yeah. says, what is this? Yeah. And, oh, you can drive over it, right. or no, yeah. I need to come and move it. So it's okay, yeah. clever stuff. Yeah. Uh, so, so, yeah. Okay. So again, um, tractor here at the back. Again, you can see another three pairs of cameras. Yeah, on the scanning. side and the rear. Yeah, yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. So it's constantly scanning around the whole of the vehicle. Yeah. Yeah, so I mean, that, that's where they've got to prove themselves from a safety point of view, haven't they, completely, that uh, to get yeah. the legislation that lets us use this kind of stuff. Yeah, so, and it's, mm. um, it's going to be a big change when we go into mm. autonomous vehicles. You know, there are lots of options available today. Yeah. Um, and again this this autonomous vehicle in some respect there's going to be elements that fit certain cropping types yeah so uh, and regions i mean something i've noticed because obviously it, was, it seems to be a bit of a trend here. crop mm -hmm. and then okay. our little rig here i guess is the introduction of maybe the ultimate in in protection and that's our sea and spray technology so yeah. again where we can see we've got our our crop here it knows where the rows are, and so it can then look and see what is outside of the row, and we can start spraying, say, herbicide specifically on those weeds. So this, this um, is the green on brown technology so correct. far. The green yep. on green is still not reality yet. I know it's not probably, just yet yeah. within our European markets, available yeah. in the US. Yeah. But again, we're still going through that learning. We're developing. We're, you know. Yeah. It's a lot just like to... Europe, we have more of most things, so I think we've probably got more weeds than uh, yeah, some other and, markets. And I guess telling the difference between a blackgrass plant and, uh, and a wheat plant or a barley plant at speed is a lot more challenging than yep. 
a green bit versus a brown bit, I guess. But this is still really clever. Uh, a big absolutely. Step and again, the, the savings from you know we've got it on test. I like, what's the kind of percentage? If, it's sort of up to seventy percent. Seventy percent less of, chemical use. So you know that's yeah. massive. It's you can see just on the front of the rig, mm -hmm. um, there's a camera. So there's a camera every meter. Yeah. So it's scanning, uh, recording, and this R900 sprayer behind me that is fitted. The cameras are so well protected in the boom, you can hardly see them, but they are just up in here. Um, here's a camera just on the end, um, oh, yeah. right up there. Yeah. So again, that's just one of the cameras scanning the crop yeah. to, uh, to f identify and the weeds. Does this work at like real speed? So yeah, it's like was doing, 16 kilometers an hour. Oh, right, so, you, so yeah, you've not got to kind of... No, you're, yeah. not, you're not hanging about. You're just spraying normal, yeah, normal kind of spraying speeds, right? Yep, yep. Brilliant. So we planted something. Yep. We've got some uh, cows in the, in the barn that are going to need something to be fed this winter. Mm -hmm. So of course, harvester-wise, um, we've got 8,000, 9,000, I guess, m m bits of news on the stand. We've got updates on our Kemper headers. So new 300 and 400 Pro Series headers. Yep. Um, Forager-wise, maybe not this one we stood next to but the one behind it 9000 or the 9500 new 18 litre engine diesel only no ad blue again that's been a real what kind big of power of that because these things are monstrous i mean we're, we're, as an arable farmer these are a bit of a, you know, it's a different language to me but yeah it always I'm, amazes me just how much power these things have They're they monsters, are, yeah they? yeah so yeah. i mean we, we can go uh or we can compete with the biggest foragers out there so mm -hmm. again lots mm -hmm. of power reduced fuel yeah but of course, the one thing that we are super sensitive about yeah. is, you know, the forage that we produce with our, our, our forage harvesters, you know, that is the bread and butter to our dairy and, and beef farmers, yeah. producing high quality forage. Um, so again, you know, that's something that we will lead in, uh, yeah. in the market. So yeah. again, important that you do it efficiently, but you do a good job yeah, of what exactly. you do. Yeah, quality, so. quality, not just quantity. Absolutely. Then, yeah. yeah. So we do a bit of harvesting. Mm -hmm. yeah. We also need to, I guess, move that forage out of the field. Yeah. So seven R, I think, <laughs> touch point on here. So we've seen a couple of updates on on seven R. You can see just on the front of the rig, um, there's a camera. So there's a camera every meter. Yeah. So it's scanning, uh, recording, and this R900 sprayer behind me that is fitted. The cameras are so well protected in the boom, you can hardly see them, but they yeah. are just up in here um here's a camera just on the end um oh, wow, yeah. right up there yeah. so again that's just one of the cameras scanning the crop yeah to uh to f and identify the weeds does this work at like real speed so yeah, it's like I was doing 16 I kilometers an hour oh, right so, you, so yeah you've not got to kind of no you're yeah. not you're not hanging about you're just spraying normal yeah normal kind of spraying speeds right yep yep brilliant so mm. we planted something yep we got some uh, cows in the in the barn that are going to need something to be fed this winter. Mm -hmm. So, of course, harvester-wise, um, we got 8,000, 9,000, I guess, m m bits of news on the stand. We got updates on our Kemper headers, so new 300 and 400 Pro Series headers. Yeah. Um, Forager-wise, maybe not this one we stood next to, but the one behind it, 9,000 or the 9500 new 18 litre engine diesel only no ad blue again that's been a real what kind big of power of that because these things are monstrous i mean we're, we're, as an arable farmer these are a bit of a, you know, it's a different language to me but yeah it always I, amazes me just how much power these things have they're monsters, they, uh, they? yeah yeah so yeah. i mean we, we can go uh or we can compete with the biggest foragers out there so mm -hmm. again lots mm -hmm. of power reduced fuel yeah but of course the one thing that we are super sensitive about yeah. is you know the forage that we produce with our, our our forage harvesters you know that is the bread and butter to our dairy and, and beef farmers yeah. producing high quality forage um so again you know that's something that we will lead in uh, yeah. uh, in the market so yeah. again important that you do it efficiently but you do a good job yeah, of what exactly. you do quality so. quality not just quantity absolutely yeah so we do a bit of harvesting mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. we also need to i guess move that forage out of the field yeah. so that's huge. seven r i think <laughs> touch point on here so we've we've 
harvested, we then need to transport that forage off the field. And I guess with 7R, we've had a few little updates, which is quite nice. So a couple of things, um, reactive steering now, so it, it drives like a car. It's so speed related. Uh, so, yeah, yeah, so yeah. It just as you spin it around a roundabout and you come out, it just self-centers, all of that good stuff. Oh, okay, yeah, a few nice. extra bits of comfort in the cab. So, so where, where are these between about? What power range is the seven now? So again, probably what was it a year ago? We introduced our new top model, so the seven R three hundred and fifty. Yeah. So that maxes out now over four hundred horsepower. So right. again, a real great tractor. Yeah. And I think maybe one of the points to stress is you know we have lots of partnerships and LaForge. You can see on the bottom there. Yeah. That's yeah. one of our sort of strategic alliances mm -hmm. where we've got this belly weight that we can add on. Ah, yeah. So yeah, yeah. you know, as a as a 350 horsepower tractor we can add weight exactly where it needs to be yeah so if you're working in a field application if you then need a bit more weight to, to put all that power to the ground we can do that or if you're going to then go and use it as a key transport machine we can drop that off and you know there's 1.7 ton that is is exactly where it needs to be and you can take it on and off in about 30 seconds. That's great, because like wheel weights are hard work to get on and off on, and particularly the internal wheel weights as well. Big wheel job. weights, pain in yeah. the backside. Yeah. And increasingly, of course, we're, we are, we're doing that. We're kind of like the same spray as the tractor's drilling as he's spraying, and we want yeah. it light for spraying, but heavy yeah. for the drill. And yeah, yeah. so yeah, it's. Uh, and of course, you know, it puts it where it needs, and we don't have to put a big ballast box on the front. So. Yeah. Are you doing anything with the central tire inflation stuff now? Because that seems to be coming more and more a default on kind of you yep. know, arable tractors particularly. so uh, unfortunately on 7r not just yet yeah but maybe something i missed out on on 8r when we we're down there so 8r is available right yep. so central tire inflation that's fully in, enclosed yeah and actually also new is on 6r we can fit it it is the external system but that can be fitted to the factory now yeah. so I, mean, we're, we're, Mitch, I know michelin are doing some real there's some real clever stuff coming with tires aren't they now yeah. where I think having central tire inflation is going to be the only way you get the best out of them where Absolutely. they're really running extreme differences between road and field yeah. pressures yeah. and I think it's going to become a bit like auto steer was 10 years ago a nice to have option I think this you know we'll look back five ten years down the line and go it's just yeah. that box is just ticked on every tractor alright so X9 uh, we haven't quite got there yet, oh, yeah. but just bear yeah. with us, all right? Yeah, so we've got yeah. some other combines in our range. So, um, of course, we've we've probably split our range not quite nicely now. Um, even by tonnage, you know, 50, 75, 100 ton uh, combines. Here we've got our T-Series, so up to 50 tons an hour. Um, real popular combine for us in, in UK market. Is this a walker machine? So, yep, yep. yep. it's a bit of a hybrid. Oh, yes, um, yeah. But yeah, with uh, with walkers, mm -hmm. and I think maybe just to, to dwell on on platforms, yeah. we've seen some over the last couple of years, you know, an explosion in the in the, like the Draper technology. It's so yeah, it seems to have made a yeah you know, the, the the limit on a lot of combines was how well you could get the crop up the front and absolutely. the Draper technology that a lot, all manufacturers are using has really moved that on, hasn't well, it? It has. You know, yeah. it's really you know added an extra level of capacity in in most combines. Yeah, and of course. I guess Drapers would be our top selling. So Hydroflex, I'm guessing this is a, that's a flex Draper so that's a as flex, well. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, but of course, we can get fixed, we can get um, um, uh, other headers yeah. in a moment. I'll <laughs> yeah. come to that. That's the hot, yeah. So I guess the one big bit of news that um, we have been talking about it for a little while, but I guess this is the first true public showing is harvest lab on combine so yeah i recognize that box from the absolutely over there, over so over there, there stuff, so yeah. we were talking about three applications now it's four because yeah. we can fit it to a combine so again we can start to measure some of that so we're getting like protein protein moisture, bushel. absolutely yeah. oil yeah oil, oil, in, yeah. in rape yeah so you can start to make some decisions as you're harvesting and we can map that i'm guessing as well absolutely so we get like protein and oil maps across the field Correct. rather than just from the way bridge back at, right. yeah and Useful. and you'll know generally mm -hmm. protein level in what you harvest yeah. can be correlated to nitrogen yeah so again you can do this whole nitrogen usage efficiency 
makes, so, makes a lot of sense to have this on the combine rather than just back at the stores, doesn't absolutely. it? Absolutely. Yeah. So, you know, you mm. can start to have a, um, make some decision making what you might do with that field going forward. Yeah. But also, you can actually make some pretty quick economic decisions of as you harvest, you know. Yeah. This store or that store, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Is it, is low it, protein stuff in that store, high protein, absolutely. then blend it out afterwards. Yeah, no, I can see yeah. some real straight away applications to that. And then, of course, I guess further down the line as the AI around agronomy evolves. So, this big, big lump here that is our That's clean, clean green, clean green yeah. elevator. Yeah. So, all the clean green growing up there. We've got a little auger, so it's taking a sample, yeah, and it will run that sample right next to our harvest lab. So that's the, the Harvest Lab box. Mm -hmm. There's our sort of um, uh, where the light sensor is. Yep. And of course that's scanning that, that crop. So it's always taking a nice clean um, mm -hmm. sample constantly. And, it, and that's what gets mapped. And of course that just instantly goes into another one of your map layers yep. from, uh, from our Green Star displays. Instantly loaded up to your operation center and you can share see that. This, see this live then almost. Absolutely. Yeah, right, brilliant. And, and in, uh, in terms of calibration and that kind of thing, is obviously it's it's a lot smarter bit of a kit. Correct. So there is a there's a yeah. calibration procedure, you yeah. go through it, and once you've done that, then it's it's ready to go. Right, so, okay. yeah. Mm -hmm. But you know, you said about putting grain in different sheds. Yeah. Um, we've actually had customers running it this, this harvest and it was a bit catchy this yeah, weather wise. Yeah, 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 very and yeah. even to the point of pulling into a field protein on this was low, the yeah. moisture was high, guess what, I am not going to cut that because yeah. it's not worth me drying it. Yeah. I'll move on to the next one yeah. and, and we'll see what that one does. Yeah, so, so again, really useful decision making tool, having that information straight away. Correct. Yeah. So, um, um, yeah, some... so yeah, really excited about that. that yeah. um, it, it becomes and almost... And is that 